five years and still talking, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Midnight Eastern Daylight Time, and we'll be talking with our citizen panel in just a bit. But first, all right, everybody, here we go. We got to uh, make our uh, call that we like to make every now and then. Here, let me see here what we got. Let's see, and it should start ringing. If there's, a, there we go. He barely made it, but I'm just glad George Lincoln Rockwell lived to see the summer of love. And how's your day going? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> the, 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 <laughs> the inimitable Stephen Pearl. What, have we, what Why did I suddenly get a call? Thank you. I Thank you very much. Hello. Hello. Yep, here. yep, yep. You're there. All the way from Las Wages, Nevada. Lost wages, you, know, you do it to make money as you walk out of the plane and into the propeller. But yep. I got to tell you. It's funny. I was thinking of that same exact joke. <laughs> I know. I know. Plenty, <laughs> man. That's, well, the, that, wages, that, that, that's the standard Shecky Shecky <laughs> joke uh, for uh, that's Las Vegas. Yes. That's it for Shecky Schwartz. Yeah. I actually have fine, a, fine comedian. I actually have a friend named Shecky, uh, actually. So. Uh, Oh really? Yeah, yeah. just the Shecky Green, and that's it. Well, he worked. For, he worked for Letterman, Sheldon. and his name is uh, Richard Sheckman. And uh, uh, oh, I know Rich Sheckman. Sure, yeah. he used to be with Letterman, was he? Yeah, yeah. When he was started working yeah. with Letterman, Letterman started calling him I, Shecky. So he, Shecky, uh -huh, Shecky, that's right. Okay. So to this day, he's Shecky. He's Shecky to me. He's Shecky to everybody. You know. Oh, okay. I did not know that. I will have to call him Shecky, Shecky the folks, next time I is have the contact with him on Facebook. Shecky is usually the generic name for a comic you want to do a parody on comics with, you know. Exactly. So I got to tell you, I, my wife just said she turned 30. I told her it wasn't been a U-turn. Boom, boom. But I got to tell you, a comedy of Shecky, Shecky, ladies and gentlemen. But I, does that come from Shecky Green? I, he's the only person I ever met named Shecky, and I've met him, but, uh, you know, I've heard him yeah. named Shecky. Yeah. And uh, his name was Sheldon, and I guess when he was growing up in a nice Jewish neighborhood in Chicago, hey, Shecky, Sheldon, Shecky. Yeah. So it just it somehow turned into Shecky and stuck. So. Yeah. And then uh, it became like a, a very generic name for every every hack comic you want to see. Not that Shecky Green is a hack, he's brilliant, but... Uh, so how's every Nobody, how's yeah, everything yeah, going with uh, um, uh, 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 generic comedy that you do? <laughs> generic comedy. Well, I got it. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Airports, fast foods. How about that, Taylor Swift? Blah blah blah. Uh, the generic comedy is alive and well, but it's not here. There are many many very funny comics there, and I'm very happy to meet them. A lot of comics retire to um, to Las Vegas. Oh, yeah, it's like uh, Las Vegas to old comics is what Miami is to old Jews. You know, you go there to finish up and die. And uh, luckily, I could go to both places. So, uh, But I like it here in Las Vegas. Well, I remember years ago, <clears throat> um, I put something wrong with my throat today. Uh, uh, years ago, when uh, Penn Jillette and Teller moved to Vegas, and uh, uh, I asked them why they did it, and they said it's cheaper to live there. It's cheaper for us to have a warehouse there than in L.A. Sure. And sure. it's well, it, there's a flight to everywhere from Las Vegas, so we're not, you're not. Uh, it's, it's not like some towns you go to where you got to drive 75 miles to go to the closest airport. You know. Exactly. No, oh, the airport's right here, and they go everywhere. And the planes you can see coming in like every, every all the time, twenty four hours a day. Planes are coming in and going out. So, well, they found that know, as uh, their but, as their show grew, uh, everything they ever did is in a warehouse. Okay. Yeah. And, and sure. sometimes a lot of these illusions and stuff take up a great deal of space. Then they just found yeah. that the cost of a warehouse in, um, I think, L. A. was where they were doing it. Uh, yeah. was so much... All uh, the dollar. Yeah. Comes down to the damn dollar every time. 
And uh, so they managed to get a really cheap uh, warehouse in Vegas, and they said, well, why don't we live here? So they built homes there, and they've lived there, and they've been, I think they've been at the uh, Rio for, it, it, maybe I'm wrong, but it may be upwards to 30 years. Uh-huh. I think. Well, especially if you're, if you're as known as them, you got a residency out here, and you haven't made, man. You know, God, you go home every night. You do your shows here, and uh, you're making good dough. Yeah, but so some people get... As you said, it costs less to live here. Some people get a re- uh, uh, residency, and then after a few years when they're no longer popular, they lose that residency. They've never lost uh-huh. their residency. They've been at the Rio. No. I remember they were at the MGM for a short time. But then they went yeah. over to the Rio, which a lot of people said, "Ah, hey, why are you going to the Rio?" Because then it was off the strip, and if you were off the strip, uh-huh. you were um, you were off the grid, so to speak. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. what they did is they drove people over to the Rio, and now that whole area supposedly is built up as well. You know. Uh huh. Um, yeah. Oh, that's a good thing about this town. They're not running out of land. It's in the middle of the desert, so they can always expand and build. It's great, which means more comedy clubs, which is very good for me. So. Uh, you know, it's great. It's not uh, like New York or San Francisco. There's just so much land that it's already been built on. Here, you can just spread out forever. Well, let me ask you: so how, ma- how, how many comedy clubs yep. are there in uh, in in uh, in Vegas? Uh, uh, Two hundred and forty-seven. No, I never counted, but they're, they're building new ones, and there's a whole bunch of them. And uh, so far, I'm just working like three or four of them, and I'm doing all right. So you know, right now I'm off this week, and I'm enjoying that too. So uh, are you making a but, living? Uh, I, don't know, I, I never. I never counted, but uh, I'm, I'm I'm paying the bills. I'm very happy with that. You're, so you're making a living. I'm making. Oh, I make. Oh, you comfortable? Why I make a good living? So yeah, I'm making a living. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, I mean, I I wonder about that because I'm not rich. You know, I'm not. Uh, but uh, you know, gigs are gigs are falling in my lap. I get them, and I'm working with really nice and very funny other comics. And uh, there's a whole community out here. It's kind of like San Francisco was in the '80s, but. Uh, yeah, and some young ones and all oh, actually, ones. Actually, actually, if you, here, which is wonderful. If so, you, uh, if you th- I don't know how many rooms are here, but there's a lot of them. So it, it it's a little bit different than San Francisco in the what 70s or 80s rather in the 80s. Yeah, well, uh, there was no cocaine and nobody. <laughs> well, <laughs> nobody, nobody wants to have a stroke. So, no, but uh, in the but 80s, there's, there's like nice people. We hang out together. We see each other at the shows and after the shows and. Uh, it's a, it's a nice camaraderie type feeling, so it's a good camaraderie. Well, here, but so the thing like is, the thing is that with the, with the the people that were involved in the '80s in comedy in San Francisco, they were young people then. Now they're old yeah. people, and they moved to now Vegas. And they moved to Vegas. And yeah, they, well, there's really no scene in San Francisco unless your bubbles, <laughs> unless your bubbles are Will Durris. There's really no scene there, so uh, you got to you got to move somewhere else. You got to go where the, the, the wheel of cheese has rolled. Well, Will be rolled to Las Vegas. Will's very good at promoting himself. You know, I, yeah. As I've oh, said he's about, great. he deserves all the success and all the work he gets. As I said about Will, he gets up in the morning and looks at the calendar, and if there's a blank space on it, exactly. Yeah, there's a square there. I got to fill it. So, yeah, 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 exactly. He's a good hustler. Yeah, very good promoter, very good hustler. I've never been rich in those areas. So, uh, yeah. So I, I, you know, I, I wondered about uh, about that, you know, about w- 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 is it that these are older comics who have uh, are trying to survive or living in Vegas, or are these a lot of them really well, good? A lot of them, a lot of them do the cruise ships and they do they play the road, and uh, a lot of them, some of them stay here in town, but uh, you know, they're they're all making a decent living and uh, they're all real funny, and uh, you know, none of them seem to walk the sparkle they had when their hair was dark. So. And there's some young comics, too. I, God, I worked with a guy who was born in 1995 not long ago. That was scary. That made me feel like I'm ready for the Iron Lung. But uh, and he was a Sam Kennison freak, and he wasn't alive when Sam was alive. I said, wow, you heard about Sam Kennison like I heard about John Garfield. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, but it's just, whoa, man, I, I'm old now, Jack. This guy was born in the 90s. Holy yeah. <laughs> oh, shit, I quit doing cocaine before this guy was born. Yeah. You probably still have, have <laughs> you probably still have a bindle somewhere from that time. Yeah, uh, there probably is. Every time I sneeze, a car payment comes out. But I got to tell you. Uh, you know, let's talk for a moment about the technology of drugs. Uh, since you were okay, a... Okay, the you technology were, of drugs. You, Electric snorters, now available. You were, you, were dr- you were a drug user, right? I like drugs, yeah. I enjoyed them. Yeah. What was your <laughs> drug of choice? 
it didn't really get in the way of my work because I, you know, I just, you know, I didn't indulge when I had a gig or something like that. But uh, you know, afterwards was another story. But yeah, but no, Mike. Yeah, sure. I, I, I enjoyed the old RX lifestyle. The white stuff. The the RX pharmacy. <laughs> oh, ph- pharmacy. No, but what I'm saying is, what was your drug of choice back in the day? Always been, it's always been marijuana. I've always liked marijuana. Back then, I did okay. some cocaine. It really wasn't my drug of choice, but I did some. But I've always liked weed. And in high school, I liked psychedelics, but that was a long time ago. Well, but, somebody uh, somebody sent us and gave us a, a vape device, you know, vaporizer. Uh, uh, yeah. Remember when vaporizers used to buy them so you could use Vicks VapoRub? And, you know, but <laughs> no, no, we're not that kind of vaporizer, folks, but a vape. Yeah. And um, vape. Uh, vape it, man. with po- uh, some pot, okay? Um, yeah. And I have tried. I use it at night to put me to sleep, which is fine uh-huh. with me. You know, it really does, yeah. it does the job. But somehow, there are two things that bother me about vaping. It doesn't quite feel like marijuana. You uh-huh. know? Oh, what does it feel like? It, 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 have you tried it? I vape, sure. I vaped here yeah. and I vape. There, but does, but does it taste? Does it feel to you like marijuana? Sure, feels good. Sometimes it no, feels stronger. No, I'm, I'm, very I'm, strong I'm, marijuana. I'm not talking. I'm not, I'm, not too, ta- I'm not talking about the high. I'm talking about what you take in. Does it feel? Oh yeah, but it's not like you're smoking pot. It's like it's like you're inhaling steam. But uh, as long as the yeah. the uh, effect is the same, I'm all for it. Yeah. Well, I, but the thing is that uh, uh, there are two things I miss. I miss kind of the taste of, of marijuana, okay? Uh-huh. That, that's for one yeah. thing. And I miss the smell of marijuana. Oh, I love this smell. That's why I do the old bowl, the old... Yeah, yeah. No, there, is, there was a such a comforting thing about the smell of marijuana. And unless people out there listening <laughs> I know. never did it's marijuana, you don't know what I'm talking about. But when you walked into a room and people were like passing a joint back and forth and you were smelling pot, it, it smelled like a, like social sociality, okay. Exactly, it smell it says a good feeling. It, it smelled warm. It smelled warm. In fact, it's very funny. I had a girlfriend who, when we drive down the road, and all of a sudden we get skunk smell because when you drive through Marin, you get a lot of skunk <laughs> smell. Yeah, we would just go, mmm, ah, skunk. Because it reminded yeah, us. I know of, it, 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 it changes the whole perception on that odor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because it smells like like skunk. Uh, I go, skunk is pretty good. Yeah, I remember the first time we saw skunk, we go, yeah, that's but, horrible. But the, then you get used to it, and then you smell skunk, and you go, ah, oh, if he's shitting seeds, we're going to find that guy. Uh, it, 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 passing a joint back and forth had a certain social quality to it. Exactly. You know, it was a sharing thing. Very uh, socialist. And then you would pass it over to the next guy and say a word that is not in the English language dictionary, ear. Ear, E-A-R, <laughs> ear. Ear. <laughs> Uh, here, here, here. And uh, <laughs> you would smoke it, you know. Uh, and uh, yep. it, it's funny. It's I mean, fun. I, to this day, I always tell the story. Uh, uh, P.J. O'Rourke, you know, P.J. O'Rourke is. Sure. Uh, yep. And I were uh, at my apartment one night in San Francisco, and uh, not San Francisco, New York. And we're pa- we're on the sitting on the floor. I remember. I think I was in a, had a had, had a, one of those bean bag things. You know, I was lying against it, and I was passing it back and forth with PJ, and then he took a, a hit of it, and he looked at me, and he went, "You know, someday this is going to be legal." <laughs> well, he called it. You know, it, it wasn't yeah. it wasn't as fast, I think, as he thought it was going to be, but pretty much uh, marijuana is legal now in the United States. The only thing, people, pretty much, yeah. The only people that As really it have be, it, it should have been legal in 1970. It never should have been illegal. Well, it, it, you know, it's still not legal here in New York, only for medicinal purposes, okay? Uh-huh. And you would think New York would go, pot? Yeah, hell, smoke it. You oh, know? sure, yeah. I mean, uh, New York was the first city I remember that if you walked past a cop smoking pot, he never busted you because they just, if they did that to everybody that was smoking pot, there'd be too many cases in court. And judges in right New up, York were known to throw cases. The old court. <laughs> judges were known to throw cases out of court by saying, "Don't bring me these kind of cases. This is nothing." Yeah, you know. Uh, but yeah. yet, New York has yet to legalize it. Uh-huh. You know, and I and I can't figure out why. Main, meanwhile, 
California, it's legal. In New York, of all places, my God, it's a $5 yeah. ticket to shoot someone in the head there. Yeah, yeah exactly. Legalize exactly. So uh, um, uh, how, about Las Ve- how about Nevada? Is it legal in Nevada yet? Have they done that? Oh, yeah, the dispensary is all over the place. It's a it's 24-hour dispensary, which is great, but okay. uh, they charge a bit. So I get mine from a guy in a parking lot for a lot cheaper. <laughs> it's, I still do it bootleggy style. I went to the dispensaries for a while, and then I discovered another source, a better, for more, you know, uh, more amount. So that's what I do now. But in order to use the dispensary, you have to have a note from a doctor, right? Nope. I just have a California license. I could get a, I could get a uh, Nevada card. I had a California one for years. And, uh, well, 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 and wait a minute, wait a minute. I could get one, but then I, I used my it, license. It, if, the California say, driver's license got it, me in the place. So, yeah. okay, I'm in. Give me this, give me this, give me this. And, uh, yeah. If you say dispensaries, if, wait a minute, you're saying dispensaries. That seems to indicate you have to have a medical condition in order to buy. Well, they are. I, I don't know what you call. Okay, I call it the pot store. How's that? Sam Drugger's pot oh, store. Oh, okay, all right. Yeah, my but, name is Mr. Drugger. In, in, in other words, what I'm there. asking is, but, in, uh, in, yeah, in, they're, they're all over. I, I could, I could go two blocks from my house. There's like four of them. In Nevada, is it legal then? Yeah. Oh, okay. Very, yeah. very legal. No, oh, okay. This okay. town is growing up. This town is growing up. The young people took it over. So yeah. the young people, meaning people my age and younger. Well, I think it's I think it's I think it's wonderful. You know, uh, from that, oh, it is. From that it's, day it's a that very I was... progressive town. It used to be not long ago. You get fifty years, and they found you with a seed in this town. Oh. But uh, now it's in, you know the new people have taken over, and it's uh, it's grown up. When I was growing up, there was a major uh, what can we call it um, a controversy, or you know, oh my God, how could he do it? Moment in which they arrested Robert Mitchum for smoking pot. I was in the 40s, yeah, 1948, I believe. Yeah, something like that. And I was just a little kid at the time. I went, oh, he's a drug user. Oh, that's horrible. You know, yeah. they, were, they were vilifying him, you know, arrested for pot. Because pot had been given this this ugly reputation by uh-huh. a government functionary by the name of Harry J. Anslinger. Oh, he to get, was a piece of shit. Yeah, oh, he did the devil's work. I hate that bastard. He, he, wanted, a, he wanted a job really bad, uh, one that would last yeah. him a lifetime. And he, uh, in about 1935, started planning articles in newspapers about people jumping yep. out of buildings from smoking pot. I mean, up until then, it yeah, was something sure. he found basically in Harlem, okay? Uh, you know, sure. it, was, it was a ghetto drug. And they, he just went after it. He, he turned it into something horrible. When and all these yeah. lies were planted in papers, and they illegalized uh-huh. marijuana nationwide. And um, he then he remained the head of the enforcement bureau for that for years. And you know they never uh-huh. passed. Sure. This is interesting. Evil they never passed a, a law time, federally against marijuana, against uh-huh. uh, 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 possessing marijuana. They made a law against having marijuana and not have purchased a, st- a tax stamp. Uh-huh. In other words, if you had marijuana, you could have it federally if you bought a tax uh-huh. stamp from the government. You know how much a tax uh-huh. stamp in those days cost for marijuana? I don't, how much? $30,000. Hello! I couldn't even make that now. So, so they, so <laughs> they, back in the 30s. They made it, like a zillion dollars back then. They made it absolutely impossible. So the, when they oh, arrested yeah, you, yeah. they didn't charge you with uh, a possession of marijuana or possession of a drug. They charged you with a tax violation. That's right. Oh, okay. God. And he oh, he God, presided work, yeah. he oh, presided over <laughs> that for years and years and years and years and years. In fact, he's the guy that went to the UN and had the UN pass a resolution against marijuana. And on his <laughs> deathbed, this piece of shit. Okay, on his deathbed, supposedly was asked by somebody, "Did you really think marijuana was dangerous?" He says, "No, it gave me a job." Oh Lord! Oh, I hope he's so far down in hell he's looking up Hitler's asshole. Now, in those fuck you, Hans Fuck your kids. Fuck in, your wife. In those days, folks, people went to prison for like ten years for possession of marijuana. Oh. Sure. You know. Sure, and that's a good way to arrest a lot of black people and Mexicans, too. That, that's Well, it was racially motivated. Yeah. You know, I mean, if you were white, you could afford to, like, get your marijuana in some, uh, by, through some guy or something and smoke it in your yeah. home, and you'd never get busted. 
But if you were yeah. black or, you know, uh, racial. Oh, you go uh, away for a long time. You go away for a long time. If you're Robert Mitchum, you go to the work farm for 30 days. Uh, well, he, he only did. You made yeah. an example of. He did like 30 days, maybe three months, something like that. You know, yeah. and he came out and all was forgiven. He was back in movies and everything. You know, so that's right. Yeah, he's he was too handsome with those sleepy eyes of his. Yeah, and beef. What is it for? Uh, remember the yeah. commercials he did? Yeah, beef. Yep. Yeah, uh, but you know, uh, Harry J. Anslinger, you know, big piece of shit. You know, so oh, he's totally he's worse. He was worse than Jagger Hoover, or at least on that level. And I, I thought it was kind of interesting that that. Uh, you, you know that uh, uh, it, it's become very legal, uh, and and it never, you know what never happened. Everybody thought that the tobacco companies were going to uh-huh. get into marijuana and yeah. just shove everybody out, but not one tobacco exactly. company has gotten into marijuana. I'm very surprised over that. Yeah, yeah not so that I know of. I mean, there may be some that have invested in it or whatever, but. You know, as yeah. for producing it, no. In fact, years yeah. ago they no. came out. Remember, remember there was a product. And I can't remember the name of it, but it came with loose tobacco, these paper tubes, and a rolling device. Uh, that, oh, I remember that was the thing they called Laredo cigarettes. That's right, Laredo. Something like that. Laredo. Laredo. And People they said, just used to roll pot it, with them and get these like Chesterfield looking joints. <laughs> exactly. Well, they at that time everybody was saying this is the this is the uh, the uh, uh, tobacco companies getting ready for marijuana. Yeah. Uh-huh. Because most people, you know, most people don't know how to roll a joint. My wife yeah. has a friend come over and roll her joints for her, even though I'm uh, not sitting next to her and I could roll, I can still roll a pretty good joint. Yep. You know, although I used to, I used to do a two paper joint. Uh, I would do those too. Yeah, but I could roll them good. But I if I got, got those, in the dark, if, I'm going to the film more easy. <laughs> but then Easy Wider came along, and that was just the right amount. And it's, you know, it's a, oh, yeah, it's a very heaven, simple that thing. That was two paper guys. You take the pot and you sprinkle it in the center of the of the paper. And then you take sure. what I always tell people to do is lick your hand fingers, okay, and then <laughs> grab yep. and start rolling. And if your yep. fingers are a little wet, <laughs> they'll uh, give you a nice roll, and you get a nice dovetail joint. Uh, there you go. I I could do it. She never <laughs> asked me to do it. She has her friend do it for her. And her, uh, okay. her friend does these really master it. Some people can These really skinny joints, which I guess. Today you would do skinny joints because pot is too expensive. In the old days, you used to get that Jamaican shit that was a dollar for a pound. And, uh, (laughs) you know, you'd make these big, like, you ever see those joints they do in Jamaica? You know, those those giant... Oh, sure. Big spliff, man, a blunt. Yes, I got it rolled in a corn husk and so big. Giant spliffs. Yeah. Oh, I love the giant spliffs. (laughs) But anyway, so I just find that vaping it takes a little bit of the socialization out of it. You know, it it just yep. doesn't have the same feel. It's too, it's too mechanical. I kind of like the uh, the taste of pot, and then I like the fact yeah. that it made me cough uh, sometimes. Um, and yeah. uh, you know, I just and I I can't think I can't believe that vaping isn't bad for your lungs. There's got to be something wrong with it. They they're starting to see there are some problems with it. Medically. Yeah, it's new. They'll, they'll, they'll find out. Uh, every well, everything's bad for well, you. It's not, you know, it's, living, living is bad for you. So it, what the hell? Babe, live, enjoy. It's not the tobacco or the pot that's the problem. The problem is uh. the vaping, the actual vape. In other words, if you were to vape without anything in there or whatever, you uh, would probably yeah. still, you know, it's not. It's supposedly not good for your lungs. That's that's what, oh, I, well, yeah. that's what I hear. But then again, I, I, keep, I don't vape that much. I smoke pop the old-fashioned way in a pipe. So. You know, they keep telling me, you know, if you, you know, I, I started to think about this. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm 79. I'm going to be 80 soon. How much longer do I have to live? Well, I could live another 20 yeah. years. But maybe yeah. n- now is a good time to take up smoking. <laughs> Cigarettes, oh Lord, I'll never do that again. Or, oh. or, you know, because I have nothing to do with my days, maybe it's a good time to start doing heroin. You know, all, heroin is good. Yeah, yeah, what the hell, man? If they you say, OD, you probably like, you know, not that far from Pep anyway. So, yeah, well, what the hell? They, they, Go with they, a smile on your they, face. That stuff will, ki- if you smoke, that'll kill you. Yeah, how long is that going to take? <laughs> oh, about 20 years. Exactly. Oh, well, uh, 
I got know, news I think, for I, you. I think you should get a few tattoos, too. You know, it's kind of like prostate. I may have, the, the doctor told me I may have prostate cancer, but don't worry, it's the good kind. Uh, it's the it, good it, kind of cancer. It, gro- <laughs> it grows, it grow- at your age, it grows very slowly, and something else will get you first. Well, that's the way I feel yeah, about if I started smoking tomorrow. The only reason I'm not going to smoke tomorrow is my wife would throw me out of the house. You know, oh, you don't want that, yeah. Because she can't stand it. Well, yeah, listen, Stephen Pearl. Gosh, I always enjoy talking with you, especially about things which are close to your heart, like marijuana. Um, marijuana, good for you. Yeah. Marijuana, good music, and uh, yeah. Lipton uh, chunky clam chowder soup. Very if any, good thing. If anybody in our audience is going to Vegas, what, are you going to be playing somewhere in Vegas soon? Yeah. Uh, let's see. Where's the old calendar? I have a calendar with cats on it, little kitty cats. Uh, let's see. Let's go to August. I don't know how much August. September seems to be picking up here. August, early August was good. Let me see. As I go through here, there's July. Whoops, hold on, sorry. Wait a minute, wait, 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 September would be what you're looking for. That's what I'm looking for. Here it is, right after August and right before October. I'll be at uh, Bonkers at the Rampart Casino on September 5th. That's a Thursday. Then I'm going to be in Lake Havasu at Gallagher's on September 13th. Then from September 17th all the way to the 28th, now counting Sunday and Monday, uh, the twenty, the twenty second, twenty third, I will be at the Eclipse Theater, a club called Tickle Me, on the third floor of the Eclipse oh, Theater. Yeah, you're, that's so getting, that calendar is getting. I got nothing after that. That calendar is getting. Loophole, the right calendar is getting to look a little bit like Durst's. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, and I don't have to leave town. That's the best part. It's the fabulous Stephen Pearl. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, elephants and mandrels. I exclude nobody. Nice to talk to you. Five years and still talking. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Thank you very much to Stephen Pearl, and uh, we appreciate his participation in our show every couple of weeks, and uh, uh, it's pretty good. Okay, all right, let me see here. Let me give myself some volume here so that I know that I'm... Uh, getting out there, and then let me open up the uh, Skype lines here. Uh, another futile attempt at uh, being uh, in show business, and uh, there we go. Okay. Oh boy. Okay. Oh, my. You know, how am I feeling today? My feet are killing me. I've got this. I've got this. You know, this um, uh, neuropathy, and it makes my feet hurt. And I'm getting grouchy over it. But don't worry about me. Just call, make me feel happy, make me feel wanted. Um, you know, it's it. You know, it's strange. It's only like seventy-two degrees, but it's humid as hell. Now, we don't understand it. You know, it's not right. Anyway, is somebody going to call us uh, tonight? Going to going to going to give us a uh, a, a ringy dingy? Uh, that would be really nice if you did. Uh, you can go over to gabnet.net and over there on the right hand side of the page will tell you all the different ways you can call this program and be part of it and we welcome all new people we love to have you here so uh, you know uh, it's um, um, the phone number is down at the bottom if all you want to do is call there's the uh, Skype number there's even a button that you can click on that will actually dial your Skype if your Skype is on it will dial your Skype to us and then we pick up the line and we uh, we talk to you. Uh, we're not going to be on uh, what Thursday and Friday because it is the Labor Day weekend, and I decided to give everybody uh, two days off. It was also because I was going to go out to uh, Fire Island, but uh, we're not now uh, because girlfriend has to go see a doctor or something on on Friday. So uh, it's a weekend uh, that we're not doing anything. So if anybody wants us to come see them, let me know. Anyway, it, uh, is anybody going to call tonight? What is this? Am I? Are, are we on? Are we going out? I can see we're going out there. Oh well, I'll just sit here and wait. Hmm. You sh- so either I have to wait, or um, is my face red here? Do I have rosacea? Anyway, uh, I, 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 I usually I don't have to wait. Usually there's at least one person calling. At least Phil is calling or somebody like that. But apparently I uh, I may have a, uh, maybe I have a problem here. Oh, there, there we go. Well, there's Jeff. Okay, here comes Jeff. All right. Okay, so we got, we got Jeff. Uh, 
Skip tutorial. Why do they always want to show me the tu a, tu a, a tutorial? Wait a minute. Here comes Phil Meyer. Uh, let me see here. Uh, let me um, let me see here. Oh God! What? Return, turn turn your audio down there, Jeff. Yeah, we got you got that uh, audio thing going there. Yeah, okay, it's better now. Okay, let me see here. Let me get uh, Jeff in here. Okay, and uh, uh, I guess I can. Uh, I guess I can go to this. Okay, what? there we I'm go. I'm hearing twice. Huh? huh? I don't know. You've I'm got some, you, you twice. You've got something on there where you're listening to the uh, uh, to the playback. I'm gonna turn it off. Come back. I'll come right back. Oh, okay. Uh, Just. Yeah. Turn off your um, the Safari or your browser. That's all you got. Do. It's your Just, browser. Your browser. Do you have a browser yeah. up? Do you have a browser? Jeff, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. think I'm on. Yeah. yeah, it's usually best just to contact through Skype. You know? That's what I usually do. Oh. oh wait a minute. Uh, oh wait a minute. Oh God. There we go. You pushed <laughs> the wrong button, Jeff. No, yeah. I, you pre you're sharing screen. Now, how does he get out of that? Uh, I think he presses it again. No. Uh, oh, yeah, he found something to share screen. Yeah, uh, where's the share screen thing? Where does he turn that? Uh, yeah, well, he he's he gave up. He'll come back. He quit Skype. Don't get him nervous, you know. Yeah, well, he does that all the time, though. He should know well, by now not to hit that button. Yeah, but, you know, I mean... He's used to cranking, uh, putting a crank in his front bumper to get his car to start, you know. Uh, so here we come. Here he comes. Give now. him a break. Okay. Hello, Jeff. You there? Okay. Good. There he no. is. There he is. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Whatever you I do, Jeff. Where that? Do not hit. Oh, that. the share screen. Yeah. Uh, comes it's up on shark. Skype. Yeah, but you see it. You see at the bottom. There's a double screen kind of logo thing. You got a little. Little yeah, thing it's near a heart and some screen. other stuff. Yeah, I don't where it says share screen, you hit that. Do, do not hit that. Okay, otherwise we get whatever's on your yeah. screen. Uh, the audience didn't see it here because uh, uh, that's not the screen I'm showing them. But <clears throat> everybody else would, you know. And it'd be nice to share your screen if there was something we wanted to share. But, you know, there isn't. Yeah. So my feet are aching tonight, so. Yeah, uh, you yeah. have uh, neuropathy in the feet. Yeah, the neuropathy. Uh, I'll show you what I got. What, what, what'd you get? Uh, it works pretty good. You have neuropathy. Uh, it's this. Yeah. Well, I'm a diabetic, and you know, yeah, I get a little bit. So uh, here, this this little ball, it's called a rubs R U B Z, and I got it from mm -hmm. Amazon. Yeah. And uh, I just put it under on the floor, mm -hmm. and I run my foot over it. Yeah. Uh, it was six bucks, I think, from Amazon. Mm -hmm. Let me see this. My raw, a golf ball. That's free. Uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> you just go out to any golf course and just look around, and you'll find them. Does it have a big T, gold T on it? N n no. But for the Trump you know course, that I you didn't stole stop from? to think about it. But that's what I should be doing. I forgot this this little thing. Yeah. Of, well, the, this thing has this. little nubs on it. See that? What's it, what's it, it called? Really, huh? What's it called? Rubs? Yeah, R U B Z, and I got it on Amazon for six bucks, mm -hmm. and um, it's uh, it's very effective. Let me see here. Rubs. R U R U B Z. Oh, R U B Z. Uh, oh, oh foot, right. foot, mas foot massage ball. All okay, right. there we go, uh, and there is a. a how much are they? Oh, six. Uh, it was six bucks when I bought it. Six ninety-five. Oh, here close it is. enough. Here it is, but none of them are uh, through uh, Amazon. Oh, this Prime free, but there's a whole bunch of them. I don't want that. Where do I? Yeah. Get? Well, Where, well, it's, it's you know, well uh, this is six nineteen, right? And how long will it take to get to me? Buy now with one click. It'll get. I'll get it Thursday, September twelfth. Wednesday. You'll like this. What's You'll it? like this. It's wait, very effective. Wait, and I also wait, wait, wait use it on gonna, my, it's gonna my take, thumb. It's going to take me six to ten days to get that piece of shit. Mine came very quickly. Well, yeah. I, uh, you know. uh, I use it I use it on the thumb, and uh, I use it on the bottom of the foot. 
and it's uh, it's very effective. I um, I think a lot well, more here, than a smooth a, golf here, ball. Here's a trigger point, Moby point textured massage ball with targeted foot pain relief. It's two inches, and it's five ninety nine. Hot dog. I like this. Well, huh? I don't care if you I, like, I like that this. one. I'm getting this one because it's coming faster. Just uh, like I like my women. Just like your women, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, I, I tell you, this rubs is uh, it's very good. It, it's the right weight, you know. Mm -hmm. It's 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 got a. Well, this thing looks you know. to be the same thing except uh, rip off. So, uh, uh, you know, okay. I, it, 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 you know what? This golf ball does it. I you see. I forgot about this golf. I'm glad you reminded me because I forgot about this golf ball. And mm -hmm. that does probably will help with the um, uh, with uh, my neuropathy. Yeah, wait till you wait till you, you get the one with the you know the little nibs on it. Do you, uh, have, do you, do you have neuropathy? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I have a lot of it. And uh, no, this is this has been pretty handy. Yeah, so I'm I'm doing it now. See, uh -huh. there you go. Yeah. Oh, uh, how uh -huh. if you're doing it now? How come your hand is moving back and forth? What? I mean, uh, you know, uh, right? Yeah, uh, right. Yeah, yeah, that one, uh, right down by the crotch. Yeah, yeah. Oh, hey, look who's here! Look who's here! Look who's here! Uh, he hasn't been on for about a week, and we love it when he's on. More than about a week. It's uh, <laughs> lovely and attractive. Wasn't Wait, were you he here were you, last night? Well, you were here last night, weren't you, Charlie? Yeah, I was here last yeah, night. Yeah, but you weren't here last week because you had a, you had somebody visiting you, right? Yeah, my brother was in town from Chicago visiting. Yeah. 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 Okay. We went to ball games and stuff. So. Yeah. Hey, by the way, high five, man. Um, my life is uh, really good today. Uh, something yeah. really good happened. Win the lottery? Uh, no. Uh, Kirsten Gillibrand left the race. Oh yeah. Uh, I, wow. I, I was. Uh, I know you don't like her, but I, I think she's hot. <laughs> really? Yeah, she's hot. Yeah, I like that type. You like you know, that? Type? Goyesha, you know. Yeah, well, it, it, I didn't like what she did to Al Franken, so I really liked that. Well, that it, was it, really <laughs> <laughs> No, but you see the thing is, thing is that um, uh, I think that the whole Al Franken thing is what kind of made her not do too well in the uh, yeah. in in the primary race, you know. Uh, yeah. and, and I I think there were just a lot of people really pissed off at her and she couldn't get the money. Yeah, basically, and that's uh, it's all about the Benjamins, as somebody liked to say. Uh, and she probably did the thing to Al Franken just to be able to get some notoriety and and run. Yeah, I don't uh, think Al didn't give her the money. Yeah, let's see. <laughs> let's see here. Here's uh, oh look, we got Ray. He's out walking. He's, Hello. He, we, Hello. He, he always does his his part of the show remote. As we used to say. In the yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. I should go to Safeway again and do like a on, on the street interview. Stuff, yeah. Like we did that other time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, we could plan it sometime. Okay. Good to see you. Good to see you. We we're talking about Kirsten Gillibrand. Nice to see you. Kirsten oh, Gillibrand. Oh God, I can't stand her. Well, you know, she left the uh, the. She's not a candidate anymore. Good. She quit. And I, I think a lot of it had to do with the fact that nobody was giving her any money because of what she did to Al Franken. I think it really yeah. came home to roost. Did and she, she wouldn't not... take any responsibility for it. Right. And, yeah. she, and, she, and she, um, she said it's all his fault. He didn't have to resign, blah, blah, blah. And, but she put so much pressure on him, and she got all the senators to do the same. And he had yeah. to resign. He had no choice. I th there are some senators who've actually said they feel bad that they they kind of yeah. jumped in on yeah. that thing. Yeah. Well, I think that was the nail in her coffin mm. once they said that. Yeah. Well, no question about it. I mean, I think that's the reason why she just couldn't raise the funds needed uh, to go out and mount a formidable uh, campaign. Uh, yeah. Now I wonder how many more are going to start dropping out. You know, because She's like one it, of those it, what are you social justice warriors or whatever you call them. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Did Kirsten Gillibrand have enough to be on the stage with the Gang of Ten? Uh, you know, no. in between no. no, no. So she didn't yeah. make the stage. She didn't make the stage. And she could have made it. She could have made the stage of twelve, which would yeah. I think have forced uh, the network, whoever's doing it, uh, into doing it. Let me put the light on and back of me. Uh, uh, what, what was I saying? Uh, uh, she what, could have made twelve. Yeah, and would have that would have forced the network to, to do, do two nights. Yeah. So, yeah, but she was uh, short on the number of the donations. 
she only had she had less than 130,000 individual donations. Wow, pretty bad, pretty bad. You know, but uh, so wasn't there a specific numbers if you didn't have two percent or something yeah, like that? Plus, you're plus 135,000. You had to have plus the two percent. It'd be at least two percent and two polls. You know, I and just so many you know, individual I'll, donors. I'll tell you something. Uh, I, I I think I don't know who's making up those rules. It may be the Democratic uh, Party, but in the yeah. old days, uh, who did the uh, who did the debates? The, the League, League of Women Voters. Yeah, and yeah. where are they now? They're not doing it anymore. You know, when they I'm did it, they kind of kicked out. Yeah, well, it was a little fairer back when they did it. You know. Yeah, yeah. it was. I mean, um, hey, what happened to? How about our friend Chelsea Gabbard? How's she doing? No, she didn't make the. She didn't make the cut. Ah, damn it! You know, and I, I would like that because uh, now I'm not going to watch the uh, debates yeah. because I make I'm it. I'm, I make it a policy never to watch a debate I can't masturbate to. You know. So. <laughs> well, there's always Bernie Sanders for you. Oh, gross. God, you know, I'm glad I I'm glad I don't have a show on Sirius XM. Well, no, I'm not glad, of, but I I'm kind of glad I don't have that. I'm glad I'm not on a regular radio station because if I said any of this stuff, the Me Too people would be all over my ass. Of course, you know. Well, you're lucky you don't have any woman demographics uh, calling into the show you know, and, and listeners to any uh, appreciable extent. Well, I have, you know, I it's odd uh, though. I do have a lot of uh, females who write on my page, who write yeah. on my Facebook page. Uh, they, I guess I just don't feel comfortable in this in this company. Too much hmm. testosterone here. Yeah. This show's gonna well, get my, this show's gonna get prostate doesn't. cancer. What? My wife doesn't. She feels real uncomfortable. Like she she just we're just too it's just too male in here. Well, it just, would be we would like it to be more female. You know, yeah. so writing writing on your wall is similar to writing on a bathroom wall. You know, uh, no, yeah. don't date Alex. You know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I just I'm not. What, what the hell? Uh, well, maybe maybe if Mar Margie uh, Marjorie wanted to come on during this time, but she doesn't want to, right? Because she has to go to sleep. She just doesn't but, even. Uh, she doesn't even want to come on the show anymore. She, yeah, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Does she still? Does she still listen to it at work? Yes, she does. Well, that's that's a that's good. Although you know, this, I mean, this week not as much because there's tennis. Uh, well, uh, yeah, and, and, you it's know, hard to compete with that. I feel like I'm a tennis widow. You know, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's like I can't. Uh, I mean, she she can't do anything in moderation. You know, like well, I will watch a few matches that I want to watch, uh, and and. I don't have to watch every match. No, she has to watch every fucking match. You know. Like me and football. Think it's, it's like you, you think and it's, football. Huh? Do yeah. you think it's because she likes to see balls hit by a racket? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Whose balls? By the way, I, I was watching. I was watching <laughs> Serena play. Anybody ever? Yeah. Anybody ever? Um, She's get very it, powerful. Get into our crumb. No. Uh, he had a character in his cartoons called Angel Food McSpade. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> it seems it seems that that uh, our crumb really had the hots for big, large black women. So he had this one character he made up called Angel Food McSpade with this huge ass, big thighs, you know, whatever. Like big butts. And I hate, I hate to say this, but every time I see her playing tennis, it's like Angel Food McSpade playing tennis. <laughs> she is just an Amazon, that woman. She's awesome. I love her. Oh, I mean, she's her. amazing. I think she's freaking She's all muscle. But the fact, all muscle. The fact that she can haul that carcass out on a tennis court... And have that much athleticism is is wonderful. You it's know. all power. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's all power. It's, yeah. it's not only her, it's her sister too. Yeah, well her, know, her uh, sister not so both much. Great. Her sister not so much anymore. Her sister did was do it did better than Serena did for a while, but then she yeah. got sick. Uh, mm -hmm. and uh, she had to kind of get out for a while and then she came back in. And when you do that you never quite get back to where you were. 
you know. But when the two of them were playing tennis, they, they could neither of them could be beaten, you know. For some you reason, know, the tennis sh- too comebacks never work. I don't know why. Mm-hmm. They just never work. Really? Comeback. Who, I, I, I don't, I don't those, know. Who were those great tennis players of the seventies? It was uh, that blonde-haired girl. She married uh, Bruce Chris Everett. or Ch- Chris Everett. Chris Everett. Yeah. Lord. Chris Everett yeah. Yeah. Well, you know what? And, well, what made me feel real good was uh, when I was doing a show at Sirius XM. Uh, I'm doing my show, Tracy. and all of a sudden uh, the door opens, and uh, it was during a break, and uh, 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 somebody, I can't remember, somebody who uh, was a producer there said, uh, by the way, somebody wants to meet you because they, they knew, you know, they, they were here at Sirius and they wanted to meet you. And I said, okay, yeah. This is Martina Navratilova. Oh, boy. Wow. And Martina was a, is a fan, was a fan of mine. So she came and sat down on the show for a while. And she she wow. just told me how much she I loved, love her. She loved my political opinions and all of that, you know. She's great. She yes, great. I know, I Phil. It's because it reminded her of being a communist. I know what you're saying. Uh, uh, yeah, I was thinking that maybe she was an oligarch. Yeah, you know, yeah. She had a lot of money, yeah. uh, you know. Yeah. But, she was just trying to. But, but she's she, it, turn your turn your microphone off when you're not. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, because uh, we get a lot of wind or something. Yeah. yeah, and wind and stuff. Yeah. Uh, but uh, so I met. I got to for a short time get to know Martina Navratilova because she was a fan. I, I was amazed. I, that made me I feel so good. Uh, there was that Bobby Riggs and. Uh, 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 another oh, Billie Jean, 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 Jean King. King. Yeah, yeah, Billie Jean King. That 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 was uh, that was good publicity. Yeah. Uh, well, it was, it was it was you know I'm 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 wondering if he was that much of a um, uh, uh, somebody said it's Robert Crumb, not Art. Did I say Art Crumb? No, I don't. Know. Yeah, I probably. said no. I didn't say Art no, Crumb. no, Alex. You said, said R. R. I said R. Crumb for Yeah, because he uses yeah. Corbin. Yes, oh. and uh, uh, that is, uh, his name was R. Crumb. That was the name he used, not mm-hmm. Robert Crumb. Okay, so fuck you. Oh, Matt Crash wrote that. So, fuck you, Matt. Isn't it wonderful when I can tell my audience to go fuck themselves? <laughs> That's why I have three I, people that are listening, you know. I, I do it all the time. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I tell your audience. You can fuck yourself, Phil? Yes. Can you do that, Bill? Cool. Yes, I can. Lucky guy. Boy, Lucky man. And, and, and Lucky I'm the man. only one that can. <laughs> Oops. Uh, you know, the only trouble with this ball and the, the, the new ball that you had me buy may solve the problem. Uh-huh. Did, did you get the rubs or did you get some other kind of thing? Well, no, I, I, I got one, a different one. But it looks just yeah. like the rubs. It just is right. uh, it's a different color and it has a different name. And it's cheaper. And it's going to get here uh, like Friday. So you got rub one off. It, well, I, yeah, I, they, it was a dollar off, so it was rub one off. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, um, the the trouble with the golf ball. I mean, the golf ball is a great idea because my physical therapist gave it to me to, to use. Uh, because I told him I, you know, I was having problems with my feet because of uh, of uh, neuropathy, and he said, "Here, do this." And I had completely forgotten about it till you mentioned it, Phil. But the trouble with the golf ball is I have to do it on a towel, and then yeah. it kind of gets away from me every now and then. Mm-hmm. Yours probably doesn't get away from me because it's rubber. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, and the and the little prickly things that are on it. Yeah. And the uh, problem with this also it. is that after I'm through using it, I have an imprint that says "Titleist" on the bottom of my foot. <laughs> so, you know. Yeah. It's, uh, um, but anyway, we're taking two nights off this week, by the way. Uh, I figured, eh, it's, you know, it's Labor Day. Let every, I was going to go away, but now I'm not. So, I'm, I'm Where do you normally go for a Labor Day? Well, no, we were supposed to go out to Fire Island, but Marjorie oh. has to see a doctor on Friday, and, you know, and she wants to leave on Sunday. So if we went out Saturday, you know, we'd only spend one day there, and that's, you know. It, it, that might be enough. Well, well no, it's it's no easy task to get out there. You know, if it were just that you waved your hand and you were in Fire Island, that's fine. But you've got to take about an hour and a half drive, of one sort or another, whether it's by train or whether it's by uh, mm-hmm. the bus or whether it's by whatever means to get out to yeah. the ferry. 
And then you got to wait for the ferry, and then the ferry takes another 45 minutes to get out to the place where we go. And, uh, you know, it's just not an easy, easy trip. So if you're going to go there, you don't want to go there for one day. So, hey, we'll take a day trip over to Fire Island. And uh, it's not that you want to spend a couple of days out there. <clears throat> Where else could you go? Did you go to Atlantic City or uh, any of those no, kinds of have, things or the shore? We have no place to go. Maybe I should just rent a car and we should just... Take well, a drive. No, but it's Labor Day weekend. Maybe I'll do it some other weekend. Yeah. But anyway, so, you know. And then I'm, I'm thinking about coming out to California, but I don't have any place to stay. So, Well, I could uh -huh. stay with my business manager, but he's over in Marin. Uh Gee, I wonder, is there any place well, I can in, stay? In this, well, in I, this place, I have a pullout, you know, in, yeah. in the uh, living room. So uh -huh. you probably wouldn't want that. You know, this is only a two-bedroom apartment. Yeah. And, uh, well, but that's, it, that's, there's a bed there. That's you know, okay. Maybe, pulls out. Oh, maybe I could stay with Buddy Love, you know, because uh, I'm putting him up. Reciprocal. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, so anyway, so, uh, let's see here. What else is happening? Oh, I got something for you. This is a couple of things, a couple of little items here. Uh, oh, thank you, Alec. Oh, I want to t talk to you about this. This is a thank you. I ordered a part today. Uh, I, uh, I, I did, did a wash today, and then I went to do a drying, and the dryer door wouldn't close. And the reason it wouldn't close is because the lint trap, which has kind of a mesh, what's mm -hmm. the word? I'm, you know, mesh... Uh, 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 filter filter on the bottom of it because it was so old it's now all buckled and everything so I had to kind of reshape it to get the the, the filter in there the, uh, the lint filter in there and uh, that didn't work <laughs> so um, let me see here I gotta put I'm very Patrick impressed you've gone from ice makers to oh. washing well machines I didn't I, that, I told you my ice maker isn't working anymore no, I, had, I had it working beautifully. It was making the most beautiful ice cubes. Uh, yeah. Hi, Patrick. How are you? Yeah, well, let me just bring Patrick into Patrick into the group. Uh, it was making beautiful ice cubes, and unlike it had ever made ice cubes before. Sometimes it made them with like hollow in the center and just terrible ice. All right. But yeah. I replaced the ice maker. I somehow the water started coming down again and filling up the thing, and it was making beautiful, wonderful ice cubes. And I was so proud of myself, and life was good again, and all of a sudden, it stopped, the water stopped coming. And it hasn't come back since, and I've tried everything to get it going, and I can't get it going. So, that unless it starts happening, the water starts coming down again, I'm through with my ice maker. But anyway. Turn so, off the... Uh, yeah the connection to the ice maker so if it starts coming down and you're not prepared for it you don't have a flood no it won't come down unless a certain it, it won't come down okay it won't right. do that yeah Be, uh, because it it something has to trigger it and the thing is if it doesn't if it doesn't have water coming down into the ice tray the ice trays get very very hot really because that's how the ice trays let go of the ice they heat up a little bit, and then the thing comes around and pushes the ice out. Then more water comes in. Well, if no water comes in, that heating element keeps getting hot. So I have to, like, put water in it using a, a baster, turkey baster, and then I just turn the whole thing off. But, you know, mm -hmm. it, it, it's kind of sad. It's kind of sad. I felt really bad about it. I was so I, I was uh, Everybody come by and show them how I'd fix the ice maker, you know? Anyway. So anyway, did, the link. Did you try to unplug it and replug it? Yeah, yeah, I've tried all that. I, I you yeah. know, I, 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 I've, tr I've tried uh, uh, thinking maybe that it was iced up up there. So I take a, uh, a screwdriver and I heat it over over the oven, the flame in the oven, get it good and hot, and then put it up in there to kind of melt anything that might be up there. Nah, that didn't do it either. So I mean, I've given up. Okay. But I, I don't want to use up the ice that's in there because it looks so nice. 
<laughs> and, and eventually, it's all going to congeal in one block of ice, you know, if I don't use it. So I probably should start using it. Do anyway, you have a good size countertop? You know, I will get back to this lint trap in a second, which is stay tuned, folks, because, you know. This is the most important. This is the best part of the program is the lint trap. What? What, Phil? Well, if you have a, enough counter space, there's a thing you can buy. It's a, it's a small box, and it makes ice. And, uh, and, there's it, also and you a, just lift there's the cover. There's also a thing I have, and it's a tray. And you put water in it, and then you uh, stick it in the refrigerator. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that works, too. But this is more convenient. This makes the cubes that are similar to what you really enjoy. Well, I, you know, but I, I, I'm dying to hear about the lint trap, so please. Please, uh, 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 folks, I know you've been sticking around. I know you, all of you out there have been, you had better things to do because the Labor Day weekend's coming up, but you wanted to stick around to find out about my lint trap. So the lint trap is like the mesh is getting mangled, and, and it was getting hard to close the door of the dryer because it would hit the lint trap which wasn't exactly seating right and then I'd have to like kind of move that that webbing or net or whatever so that it was out of the way and uh, I just said to hell with it I'm going to buy one online okay now you know what it is folks it's a little plastic thing about this this wide and it's got mesh on the bottom and so I went online. Well, first I went to Amazon, and I looked at the prices, and I went, this has got to be ridiculous. So I went elsewhere to look for it, like Parts Discount, where I finally bought it. How much do you think a lint trap like that costs? You would, I, I, I thought, hey, be 6 bucks, 7 bucks, yeah. right? Piece Ten of plastic bucks. with some... $25. Twenty nine ninety five. I got it. Wow. Mm-hmm. $29.95. I've had cheaper copays. Yeah. You know? Because um, they know you have to have it. You have to have it. You yeah. have to have it. And I looked elsewhere to see if I could buy it cheaper. I found later a place that I could have gotten it for $25. So, of course, I was beating myself uh, like crazy, saying, I could have saved four bucks, you know, because a, a Jew does not like to lose four bucks, okay? <laughs> You know, it's but probably uh, cost them fifty cents to make. This thing has <laughs> got to cost it at no more than fifty cents to make. You know, how much is a new dryer? Uh, uh, no, that's, that's, that's not that's that much it. more. The new dryer is only twenty five dollars. Uh, <laughs> right. What you do is you buy the dryer and then you take the lint trap and exchange it. But I had to find the right lint trap too. You know, I went to lint traps or us. So twenty nine ninety five plus plus tax, which brings it up to, uh, well, I guess it doesn't. In New York, forty dollars. Oh, oh, shipping is free. <laughs> Lovely. Woohoo! There it is. Parts discount. Got I that. hope it fits. Huh? I hope it. Oh, fits. it'll fit. It, it's the yeah. exact uh, the exact the part. Yeah. Uh. No, I I check the uh, the model number and then I I put that into. Uh, Google, and then I said lint trap, and then it showed me all the people that were selling lint traps there. And I also put it into Amazon. I would think Amazon would be the cheapest, wouldn't you? Yeah, usually. Some yeah. yeah, but no, no, no. Not true, you know. So anyway, boy, it is hot in here, and the air conditioner's on. What the hell? Here, you know, me... when you were a kid, hey, Alex, did you ever... Was... Hmm? What, what? I was reading this article about this guy. He, uh, he he would go to Costco, and every time he needed printer cartridges, he would just buy a new printer because uh, yes, exactly, it was cheaper. Yeah. And he had a whole garage full of printers. Yeah, I bought my printer for a hundred and nine dollars. If I wanted to replace that ink at Costco, it would cost me something like it would it wouldn't cost me that much, but it would it would get to you know. It was they, have a, they have a cartridge in the printer that uh, the starter cartridge. So the yeah, starter cartridge on mine lasted forever. Yeah, so, you know. So you get a new printer. So then the I same got price well. Th then I got the yeah. I, I got the I got more ink because it started running out. Finally, I got more ink, and uh, I bought cheap ink. Didn't buy the uh, HP yeah. ink or the well, who was it? Who is who made mine? Uh, what is I, who? What is this? This is. Uh, I think this is a. Uh, I can't even read it from here. 
Yeah, it's an HP. Yeah, it's an HP. So I went and I I, I bought uh, the um, uh, the uh, cheap ones. You know, because every time I've ever bought cheap ink, it I can't tell the difference. You know, they just take old cartridges and refill them with ink, right? So I order them, and I bought, I bought these ones a long time ago, just so in case when I finally needed them, because I figured those, those cartridges that came with it would run out really fast, but they didn't run out really fast, okay? And so uh, I uh, 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 then put the new one, those, those in, and it wouldn't work. It just wouldn't work. So then I went back, went back to Amazon to see what I could buy, and then they say, these ones will work with the HP, okay? And so I sent for the new ones, and the new ones did work with the HP, except every time I bring up the program to look and see how much space I've got on the ink cartridges, there's an exclamation mark or something that said, this is not an official HP ink cartridge. Yeah. Well, fuck you! So it isn't. Some Somebody on the show the other night was talking about a printer that you put ink in it, and it, it was, uh, you get like a couple years worth of ink, and it, it's a bottle uh, of ink that you squeeze wow. into, into it. I don't remember what brand. It might have been uh, Kevin that uh, was talking about well, it. You, I looked the, it up. Yeah, it, these companies, uh, like this thing was like 35 bucks for the ink instead of... Uh, what was it going to cost me for all the ink that I needed for this thing? I think three hundred dollars. No, it was uh, it was like it, even at Costco, it came out to something like eighty bucks, ninety bucks. You know, so fuck yeah. you. I'm going to get the thirty-five dollar. Uh, maybe the ink doesn't look that good, but I don't give a shit. You know? Yes, Charlie. How many pages do you print a month? So if you put a ream of paper in your printer, how long? Uh, oh, I, I don't, I don't print, I don't print that much, Charlie. Oh. Yeah, I tried to do that on my Canon printer. I bought that for sixty dollars five, six years ago. But every six months, I have to buy seventy dollars worth of ink to print with. Yeah. Well, and the only reason I don't do it, but um, Bill friend did, is because I don't have any space to store all the printers. <laughs> yeah, but you know something? Just throw it in the fucking garbage. Uh, 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 Ray, would you turn off your microphone? He did. Oh, he did. Okay. He did. Uh, anyway, uh, where, where was I? Oh, so um, um, I just, you know, I mean, it, he, what they are is it's the uh, it's the razor and razor blade concept. Yeah. You know, that uh, we will sell you the razor for next to nothing. It comes in a blister pack with some some blades, right? Yeah. And then we will charge, I mean, the blades for my razor, for like maybe 10 of them or 15 of them, I don't know, is like $35. And those are the cheaper blades, <laughs> you know. I mean, it, it, they, but they always it went with that, that whole theory of, you know, you, you buy, we give you the razor and we charge you like a lot of money for the blades. Yep. And, and, and you know when they charge, like, you know, we'll say, okay, $35 is a lot of money to be paying for these blades. And the reason why is because they last so long. You can go, I can go a good month on yeah. one blade, okay? So, they, you know, that means I can probably go a year on a pack of, of, of razor blades because I shave maybe every three days, four days. You know, I have nothing to live for. And uh, I'm, not, I'm not going out on job interviews. Uh, and, and so uh, it, it really, um, you know, it, 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 uh, it, that's why it's so expensive, because they know you're not going to buy uh, a, a new set of blades uh, for a year or so. So they got to make sure they make the money out of you now. Yeah. Um, but anyway. Hell, uh, hi, Patrick. Hi. How you doing? I'm super dandy. You know, you joined our program at a good time because we've been talking about lint traps and razor blades, and I think <laughs> that, that's what drew me to it immediately. I, mean, I, was, I was I was scrambling to get out of the shower just so I could get to. <laughs> oh boy! Yes, yes, Jeff. 
So we have a good solution for the printers. Yeah. We we our printer is downstairs, mm -hmm. and we base don't ever go downstairs at all mm -hmm. for any reason. Yeah. So because of that. It's like, who the heck wants to use the printer? <laughs> well, so we just uh, use it less. Well, but, but like, here's, here's, no, but, but you, obviously it's an old printer. Because with yeah. my printer, I can, I, I can print from my iPad. I can print from any computer in the house. Yeah. Uh, I can use, uh, you know, I'm using uh, the Wi-Fi to talk to the printer. So you can keep it in the basement all you have to do is go down there every month and get the stuff you printed in the last month <laughs> you know? what happens if your neighbor's wi-fi starts printing on your printer you know and then all of a sudden you get a bunch of stuff you know something they probably could if they had the password but they don't have the yeah. password yeah that, that well they that, know that, that the password is usually password but it's password yeah. <laughs> or password <laughs> asterisk nobody's going to figure that one out you know what I hate? Um, what do I hate? I hate just about everything at this age. Um, oh, today I did a great interview with Ronnie, uh, and it didn't record. Oh, oh no. I, I'm, this other machine I got here, I'm having problems with it lately when I record the video on it. So I'm going to do it. I'm going to redo her tomorrow. I'm going to use this machine here uh, because this one I, love I know. Those uh, that one won't won't have a problem. Uh, That's why I show you this view here. Yeah, nice. we see the ducks Sorry. and everything, which are f flying around, and that's nice. Oh, that's beautiful. The golden uh, hour, huh? Looks like the golden hour. Yeah. But everybody, be quiet and let him just talk. Maybe I can just, uh, maybe I can put this uh, this picture on. Let me see here. Single. Let's here see. we are. There we go. Look in at the beautiful that. shoreline. Look aviation it. recreation area mm -hmm. where ducks are flying and geese are honking yeah yeah <laughs> and skunks are skunking and skunking skunk. <laughs> boy that looks yes. gorgeous that just looks wonderful oh. yes mm. kind of this is it. a pond <laughs> that's a reflection of trees yeah. well thank you and that is Thank, thank you, Mr. Thoreau. We enjoy hearing you. You're so welcome. <laughs> we can. Beautiful. Uh, wow, that's terrific. Yeah. That's really terrific. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's a mosquito biting me on the nose. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yes, biting you on the nuts. Yeah. Anyway, um, so anyway, um, oh, where was I? Oh, yeah. So, uh, so, I was, so Ronnie, I recorded her today, and I... Then I went back and watched. It was only six minutes it recorded, and then it stopped recording for some reason. So I'm going to do it on this machine tomorrow. I, 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 I'm, that machine's starting to get to me because it's been having problems recording. It never had problems recording the interviews before, but it has recently. And it could be there's something new in the program or whatever. Now, listen, I want to bring this up. First, first of all, well, I have two things to bring up. Uh, I don't know which one to bring up first. I'll bring this one up first. Trump is threatening to sue NBC Universal. Have you heard about this? Have you heard about this, no. Phil? Why he didn't get his lint trap that he ordered? Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. He just he just want to write a tweet on that. Here we go. Now, I, to begin with, if it is my recollection, you can say anything about the president of the United States you want to say, and he can't sue you but then again he can say anything about you and you can't sue him in other words i can say he rapes little babies and there's nothing he can do about it all right on the other hand he can say i rape little babies and there's nothing i can do about it the president is immune from legal action suit wise um and federally he may have some things he's culpable for but you, while he's president, you can't sue him, and he can't sue you. And also, people who are in the public eye have less of a right to sue than uh, than other people. Okay, just because the more well known you are, the less you have the ability to sue for libel and slander and things like that because you're in the public eye. But the president can't sue. Well, anyway, he's suing NBC Universal. Get this. 
personal attorney for Donald Trump warned executives of NBC Universal that legal proceedings could be pursued over a comment by MSNBC's Lawrence O'Donnell. The story reports that Trump's attorney, Charles Harder, that's quite a name, uh, threatened NBC Universal with a defamation suit over a comment Tuesday on, uh, on his broadcast in the last word with Lawrence O'Donnell. A demand letter from Harder also reportedly is concerned with a treat, quick tweet from O'Donnell, which uh, I'll read to you in a moment. Uh, it quotes Harder's demand letter saying, the program and tweet make a false defamatory statements that Russian oligarchs co-signed loans provided to Mr. Trump by Deutsche Bank and describe these co-signers as Russian billionaires close to Vladimir Putin. O'Donnell followed up today with a tweet admitting he had erred. He wrote last night, I made an error in judgment by reporting an item about the president's finances that didn't go through our rigorous verification and standards process. I shouldn't have reported it as I was wrong to discuss it on the air. I will address the issue on my show tonight. Trump is certainly notorious for defamation threats, but this may be the first formal one from a sitting president. They, they never usually do that. Should Trump actually pursue defamation suit and it survive any initial First Amendment challenge, he'd subject himself to a discovery process months after the conclusion of the investigation by Robert Mueller, which Trump repeatedly characterized as a witch hunt. In other words, if he decided to sue, then there'd be a discovery process and they could, uh, you know, uh, bring him into court and ask him questions about his finances and whether any of this was true. And hey, He doesn't want to do that. Um, but what O'Donnell wrote in his tweet was, a source close to Deutsche Bank says, Trump's tax returns show that he pays very little income tax and more importantly that his loans have Russian co-signers. If true, it explains every kind word Trump has ever said about Russia and Putin. Um, what, do you, what do you people think? I mean, I don't think Trump can sue for this. He, he's president. He, he doesn't have that right. Phil, how do you Patrick feel? Got his hand up. Oh, Patrick, you got your hand up? Yeah. yeah I, I, I think it's a moot point at this point. I mean, O'Donnell apologized, and he should have apologized anyway just out of, if he was wrong, you know, I mean, just, just, yeah. just add him. I don't know uh, that what he did was uh, actually apologizing, though. Um, well, admitting a mistake. Yeah, yeah. It, it, well, admitting admitting that he hadn't vetted it. Right, uh, and that, that, that still yeah. goes it's a mistake because mm -hmm. it's the same shit I deal with on Facebook with people putting memes out that have no sources. So mm -hmm. at least O'Donnell admitted whether it was a mistake or it wasn't, that he didn't go, you know, it, it wasn't completely verified. Well, it could still be true. It could y still be, but yeah. right now... Until it goes through that process, yeah, it's not true. Yeah. So, so uh, I'm surprised. You know, Donald's a pretty upright guy in that he usually would vet something like this. But why he took it at face value, I have no idea. Yes, Phil. Uh, Melania Trump sued. Uh, uh, I think it was a magazine and won a lot of money uh, fairly recently, uh, and then also. Uh, you know, you look at some of these actors that are public figures, mm -hmm. and uh, they've sued and uh, well, they they and, can and they can sue, but their ability to win is mitigated by the fact of their popularity. Is what I'm yeah. saying. But so far as the president is concerned, the president can't sue anybody. In fact, most politicians can't sue anybody. Uh, uh, they haven't, but hmm? uh, I don't. You know. I guess that's up to the court to decide whether they're going to take the case, right? Y y well, yeah. Yeah. But I, 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 so far, it's just, you know, it's saber rattling right now. Yeah. And but, most politicians can't afford to sue and get their own attorney until they get out of Congress or. Well, uh, in this and case. And then they make all the millions. In and, this case, I mean, does Trump really want to sue when he would then have to be deposed? Yeah. Sure. You know, so. Uh, probably, probably not. I, you know, this is most likely saber rattling on his part but Patrick you, you know again uh, uh, yes Patrick well as for Melania she's not an elected official no yeah uh, yes and there was something wrong just like with paparazzi dealing with uh, famous people 
they have sued and they won. So mm -hmm. it, it's on that same order. Trump or any other elected official, yeah, they don't have that right to sue. Um, until they're private citizens, I would imagine. And then if there's something that defamatory said about them or printed, they can pursue it. But would they win? Like Alex said, if, you know, that that probably even more difficult versus if if I said something about one of you guys right. that, you know, us suing each other is a little bit more uh to the legal standard, so yeah, I think Trump is just being Trump and his lawyers, and and I think drop it now because O'Donnell admitted they, that he shouldn't have said it on the air, so leave it leave it be. Yeah, yeah, uh, I, you know, I mean, uh, uh, certainly, I don't think he he, I don't think he apologized because of fear of being sued, but I think he apologized because he felt he didn't have. He didn't vet it well enough, and that he should say that and tell his audience that. I mean, O'Donnell, uh, compared to a lot of other people, uh, is a pretty stand-up guy. Um, and uh, I think he found this maybe didn't fit in his idea of fairness. Okay? So, uh, you know, uh, what the hell? But uh, I just thought that was an interesting story because presidents just don't sue anybody because they, they really can't. Um, uh, he, his common thing is to sue people, so maybe no to you know, threaten to threaten to sue people. He to very sue seldom exactly. ever sues people. I mean, right. like remember you remember Bill Maher mm -hmm. when he yeah. he said that he was the son of an orangutan, <laughs> and then they showed a picture of an orangutan and a picture of Trump, and they looked <laughs> remarkably alike. Okay. And and uh, he he threatened he sent a, a cease and desist or something like that to him you know and said we're going to sue you for saying that. Well, he wasn't president yet at the time, was he? I think he was still running or yeah. whatever. But uh, so I think Mar did some kind of an apology that was it was almost worse than if he hadn't apologized because what he was saying was. No, I I have to I have to take it all back. Donald Trump isn't the son of an orangutan. So you know you're only doubling down on your joke, you know. But mm -hmm. uh, good, uh, you know. I I, I was very uh, amused by that. But yes, uh, you've got your hand up in the dark, so we can't. Ready? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, isn't O'Don O'Donnell's the guy that uh, Trump and? They've been fighting for a couple of years, right? Trump kicking him out of the White House and all that. Who? Same kicked, guy? kicked O'Donnell? Chris O'Donnell. No, 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 no. No. Oh, uh, he kicked O'Donnell out. No, O'Donnell. You mean a, a newscaster? No. Yeah, uh, I got was a O'Donnell, guy, but... O'Donnell was, oh, okay. uh, the O'Donnell, Lawrence O'Donnell, I believe, was the press secretary to Bill Clinton. Okay, I got him mixed up. I think, so am I right, guy, Charlie? the CNN guy. So, Charlie, am I Chris right? Chris O'Donnell or something. Lawrence O'Donnell was the vice president. The was Clinton's uh, press secretary uh, at one point. Now I was thinking of the guy from CNN who uh, Trump oh. kicked out of the press room. Oh, oh yeah, no, 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 no. Chris O'Donnell, I think, is his name. No, no, no. no. But anyway, okay, Lawrence, guy, Lawrence O'Donnell later went on, oddly enough, to be a, uh, a writer uh, on uh, on the West Wing. West Wing, yeah. And at one point, played the president's father. In a flashback, so um, anyway, and uh, in fact, a couple of people from Clinton's administration. Who was the woman who was his press secretary? Uh, uh, Dee Dee Myers was one oh, of the yes, right. was one of the consultants on that show and wrote some episodes as well. Helped write some episodes. Since you know, Aaron Sorkin, I think, wrote every episode except one, or at least he had a co-writing credit on some. Whatever. Is, mm -hmm. Hey, Alex, yes. can it be possible that maybe the walls are closing in on Trump? Well, I don't know if they're closing in on Trump. I think uh, Trump's closing in on Trump. I mean, even, Phil, don't you even feel, feel that Trump's acting a little erratic lately? No, nah, I just think it's the news that is uh, slanting anything he says. 
uh, I seem well, to understand no, but it, but it what he a, says and it, how he says it. it, it well, it, it, are you, oh, you're the. Because uh, I'm not looking for something you, negative. You're the, you're the Trump talker. Oh, wow. what? What happened? You've been removed from the call by another participant. Oh God, who did this? Who did this? One of you hung up on me and called the, let me see here. Join, join, will this work? Will this get everybody back? Uh, yeah, this will get everybody back, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, who just hung up, me, hung up on me? No one, you no, hung up on us. No, I didn't. Somebody hung up on me and that made wow. the whole call fail. Yeah, really? yeah. Yeah. How do yeah. you? Uh, hmm? Oh, yeah. There's a there is a way to do that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, if you if you want, I, yeah. I don't think anyone did it because. Well, somebody did it because all of a sudden I got a notification here that you've been removed from this call. Well, I've been playing oh. nuts this whole time, so I. You've been playing with Jeff, your nuts this whole time. Clicking yeah. again. Anybody no. else click? <laughs> anybody? Is anybody I else? I haven't touched mine. Okay. Well, who knows why it happened. You know, uh, I did figure out how to get everybody back, though. I simply got to join back, and I got everybody back. It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is, the new this, is a new, this is the new improved Skype, right? <laughs> you know. The only thing that's improved about it is that once uh, I learned uh, how to use uh -huh. this NDI and could put everybody's picture individually in, independent of the Skype picture, uh, it, it really works nicely. You know, that that aspect of it, but the rest of Skype is the biggest clusterfuck. I mean, it, it just, you know, just don't, nobody, t don't touch anything. Don't touch anything. Well, don't, but somebody, somebody said to Skype, I don't want Alex on anymore. <laughs> got rid of me. I don't know how. By the way, tonight I got on my, I have another Skype line and it's hooked up to my, uh, up to my uh, uh, Echo. Uh, I have to, you know, um, uh, and and uh, I got a uh, I got a a prank, a, a, a prank call uh, from some woman, uh, but I didn't pick up on it because it was called like Precious Dolly or something like that. I can't remember what her name was. Did, huh? Did you pocket dial me this afternoon on Skype? No. No. Okay, because no. I got a call from you. You did. And, yeah, and then it was immediate hang-up. Well, I was Maybe. fooling around with Skype a little bit. Maybe somehow I hit the wrong button or something. I don't know. Yeah. But I was just testing the system so I could use, do Ronnie tomorrow. I was moving back and forth between two accounts. So ah. that, may have been, that may have been the reason why. Yeah. Um, okay, another story here. Um, and, and, and again, I, I want to ask you this because is this fair? Okay, uh, three days after he was arrested, the general counsel for the Motion Picture Association of America was fired by the organization. Uh, Deadline has reported that the group axed Steve per, for, uh, Fabrizio yeah. following his arrest by police in the District of Columbia for an alleged sexual assault and attempt to blackmail. What is that? That? that was Charlie's phone. To blackmail a woman's a woman who he met on an online dating site. In a letter hmm. Monday, the board of the group, which represents Disney, Netflix, Paramount, Sony, Universal, and Warner Brothers, that means everybody, the MPAA, CEO Charles Rifkin, is quoted as writing, this is to inform you that Steve Aprecio's employment with the MPAA has ended for violating certain terms of employment. The organization, he was the organization's top in-house attorney, and he was reportedly charged on August 24th. Rivkin informed the board that he asked Daniel Robbins, Fabrizio's former deputy, to be interim general counsel until a permanent replacement could be found. He had reportedly held the job for the past six years. Now, here's my question. Yes, I know he's been charged with sexual assault. He's also been charged with blackmailing a woman. But he hasn't been found guilty. Should they fire him, or should they put him on suspension? That that would be my my. 
your suspension because charging is pretty severe. Mm -hmm. That you know that that that's some, some bad shit. But if you're not convicted yet, I don't see why you should lose your job. So yeah, suspension I think would be reasonable. Yeah, he he's an attorney. Yeah. Uh, and now uh, attorneys, I don't know if they have some special deal uh, uh, where they can't practice or there's some issue uh, when you're accused of these kinds of um, uh, crimes. Um, yeah, but you're not uh, you're moral, not you're, moral you're, perpetuity. You're not thrown off the bar. You're maybe suspended from the bar or whatever, but you're not you know you but here uh, the MPAA just outright fired this guy. Now, I got news for you. I mean, he, he may be a, uh, he may have sexually assaulted a woman, and he may have blackmailed her. But until that can be proven in a court of law, you can't take that to the bank. That was an expensive date. It was a very expensive date. <laughs> His career. You know. Um, so, I mean, uh, you know, I just, I, uh, this happens a lot lately, though. If these people try to suddenly somebody just gets accused of something or they're indicted for something but that doesn't mean you're guilty it means there's enough proof to indict you there's but but it's, there's got to be a trial so they can find out if it's all true or not and you can def, you have the right to defend yourself but he doesn't have a right to defend himself to the MPAA does he uh, I don't know uh, mm -hmm. you also have a right to face your accuser well, yes and no. You know, a lot of times today, these women who make these charges, uh, there's a, a thing where they're trying to protect the victim. And so they don't have to face their accuser. I mean... Years ago... Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah go ahead. Uh, years ago, uh, they uh, didn't even put people's names in the newspaper. Uh, if someone was accused of a crime, it, it stayed uh -huh. private until uh, there was a conviction. And do oh, well, you remember? Well, I mean, here, no, here's, no, here's what happens in England. Uh, a yeah. guy, uh, somebody's accused of something. Murder, let's say. The, uh, I don't know what they call him, but the, the, you know, the attorney for the crown or whatever, whoever. The, the, the barrister. Per, well, no, the person who's the equivalent of a, of a, of a district of attorney. attorney. I think they call get, them barristers. Gets in front of the press and says, we have arrested so-and-so, and we are charging him with first-degree murder. That's the last thing the government ever says about them. There are no more press conference. There's nothing else. And then the press is admonished if they try to try it in the press. Mm. And but to hear... We not only try things in the press, we just make we insinuations them. in the press. You know, Louis C.K. Yeah. wasn't found guilty of anything, but, you know, do you think he's got a contract now with Fox to make TV shows? No. And and um, he, uh, all he did was he said, yeah, the story's true, but I'm sorry, and it was meant as a joke, you know. I, I, I don't know when I would ever refer to my penis as a joke, but, you know, I mean, yes, Phil. Uh, uh, you, when you said uh, England, UK, it uh, reminded me of a story today that uh, the parliament yes. has been suspended yeah. uh, in the UK so that they can't uh, uh, throw a monkey wrench into the uh, Brexit uh, uh, departure. Yes. Uh, and I guess they're uh, suspended till the mid October. And the Queen approved it. Yeah, they said it was a formality that they, oh, Queen would always approve a request from uh, the Prime Minister. I guess. Yeah, so what he's doing is he's preventing the Parliament from fighting Brexit or fighting right. making a deal on Brexit. Yes, Jeff. Who was the, was the fellow who's uh, Johnson. potentially uh, going to court, okay? And, and you said he was an attorney. Was he acting as an attorney for this company? For the MPAA, yes. He was the lead attorney. Oh, then that's why they really yeah, can't but, but, keep him working. Well, yeah, but, they, but, but, you know, I think that... But you, I didn't say that he has to be you, permanently you put fired. Him, you put him on a paid leave or something like that. Yeah. You suspend him with pay. Because you're not, you're not... Then once he's found guilty, goodbye, see you later. You're not going to be part of this company. You know. Yeah. They probably doesn't want the uh, hint of impropriety. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 
it could weaken their position for other things and they just say hey you know you, you got involved in something and uh you know good luck to you yeah exactly so i mean it's just too much of this is happening now you know where people are simply accused of something and all of a sudden they're not working anymore i mean you know you can be on a you can be the host of a game show and if some woman accuses you of having slapped her on the ass next thing you know you got a new host for that game show how did that guy Dobson always get away with kissing those women on the uh, on that game show? Dobson. Uh, yeah, Dobson. Dawson. Uh, Dawson. 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 Oh, because he was Kiss. Richard everybody. Dawson. Richard Dawson. That's because he was because he was a lecher. That was the old days. Yeah, he was a lecher. That was the eighties. Yeah, that's uh, when that's when you could pat a woman on the ass. You know, remember those days when you could pat a woman on the ass? Now today, no, it still hurts when they hit you back. Yeah, well, that that you know, I don't think in my entire life I ever patted a woman on her ass. Anybody else here done that, ever? No. Did, I don't even did you ever grab them by the pussy? Sex. Did you ever grab them by the <laughs> pussy? Well, I have grabbed them by the pussy, but we were in bed together and we were making love. But you know, I mean, but uh, uh, I I don't know. Do, do do people? You know, I I remember my ex wife Ronnie. We were in Italy, and she had to mail a letter or something, so I sent her into a railway station where they had a post office, and I waited outside in the car. And she came back, and she said, that was the most painful experience of my life. I said, well, why? She says, I walked through the railroad station, and I must have gotten my ass pinched 25, 30 times. And when we got back to the hotel, her ass had bruises on it. From all the pinching, because this is what Italian guys do. Now I don't know if they do it anymore. They don't, do they have the Me Too movement over there? Yeah, yeah. let me let me pat her too. Yeah, let me pat her too. Yeah, uh, uh, but back then uh, it was you know, it was it was supposed to be a compliment. Yeah. Kind of the same compliment you get when a construction worker uh, whistles at you when you're walking past it. You know, well, not me, but a woman. Was it Marjorie that said to me? She said, "I didn't like it when they used to whistle at me when I was walking down the street. Now it kind of bothers me that they don't." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, those days of whistling. I was talking to Ronnie today in, in the interview that you won't hear, but maybe we can recreate it when I do it with her tomorrow about, you know, when I was a kid, uh, and I was into superheroes, uh, the super, well, let me ask you guys, what, you, 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 when you were younger, did you want any superhero powers at all? Oh, oh I did. What would you want? Yes, hell yeah. I, I would love to be Spider-Man. I would love to climb the walls. I would love to climb the walls? Yeah, yeah. I would like to, yeah. well, Not those walls, though. Those walls you've got make you climb the walls. Um, <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Um, uh, Ray, what what were you? What did you want? Oh yeah, I always had this dream. I used to dream it. I used to fantasize that I was invisible. Yeah. And I could yeah. take sports cars, Ferraris, drive them around. Nobody would know it was me. It was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Invisibility. Either that, or I could make everybody. Fall as, I could make the whole world fall asleep, and I could do whatever I wanted for as long as I wanted to, and then make them wake yeah, up. Yeah, well, I'm, I you, I agree with you. My my desire was uh, to have the power of invisibility, and uh, now that I'm the age I am, I have it. You do. <laughs> you know, See, I'm totally, me, I'm I, totally I dream that I could fly. Yeah, yeah, but uh, I'm totally. You know, just just by moving my yeah. arms. I, I, I well, flying is very common dream. Uh, but the yeah. thing is that I, uh, I just, you know, I, uh, I, I'm totally invisible to the rest of the world. People don't n notice me anymore when I walk down the street, you know. Uh, welcome I, to the club. Huh? I've got the said, welcome to the club. <laughs> yeah, well, we've got the cloak of invisibility, right? Mm -hmm. Right on. Get that. My Alex superhero. It, it, hmm? it must be poignantly, it must be different for you, Alex, in that you had a... a a degree of celebrity at one time, yeah. and now people don't. That must be really weird. What? That yeah. must be a, well, still huh? does. 
I don't know. You still do. I, I don't. No, you still do, but I mean, you know what I mean. You know, I, I like do. you were on national radio for so long and everything. Uh, yeah, but I, you know, I, um, that part doesn't bother me, oddly enough, you know, uh, because it never impressed me when I had it. So, um, uh, okay. I, 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 I don't really miss it, uh, that part of it. Um, I guess what I do miss is some of the perks, you know. Um, it's funny when I was uh, when I was a, a big shot in San Francisco. I would go into a restaurant, and uh, you know I was I was well known enough that if I walked into a restaurant in San Francisco, uh, heads would turn and look at me as I walked in because I was hey look there's Alex Bennett. Uh, I'm not saying this to seem important. I'm saying this to make a point. And I would have the owner of a restaurant go when it came time to pay the check, oh, no, it's on us. And I would say to them, no, it's not on you. It's on me. I'm going to pay for it. I, there's no reason why it should be on you. I said, but if you want to do a really solid thing, I'll pay for this meal now, but you remember this. And one day somebody's going to come in here when they don't, even ha when they don't have any money, and who knows, it might even be me. And then you give them a free meal. You know, pay because, it forward because well, you know I, why because I, I can you? pay for it. You know, huh? You know why they recognized you? Uh, you were on billboards. You were on buses. I was also on uh, TV too, in San Francisco. Pardon me. Uh, I was also oh, on TV. Channel Nine. Yeah, TV. Yeah, uh, well, I was on Channel uh, Nine, but 40, I was also thirty-six or forty-four. Uh, forty-four, and I was on twenty. Oh, 20, 20, yeah. twenty, and then I also then I wound up doing uh, that uh, show that I got the uh, comedy. Uh, no, the uh, 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 login TV, uh -huh. which was the uh, thing I won the Emmy for. Oh, right, right. You know, uh, so, I mean, I, people knew what I looked like. Uh, and uh, it was an uh, image that was burned forever in their brain. But, you know, I mean, uh, I, uh, but I, I just, you know, I just, I just, it was always amazing to me that people who can afford stuff gets more stuff for free mm -hmm. than people who can't. You know, I would get all kinds of free stuff. You know, they would send stuff over to the station. Oh, hey, listen, uh, Apple gave me a Macintosh. You know, hey, oh, you're Alex nice. Bennett here. Have a Macintosh. We want you to see what it's like. That's, that's a good uh, perk. Well, Billy it, Martin, it, it, the bad baseball. news. The bad news on that one was it was the um, um, uh, the one? Mac they were making when what's his name, the guy from Pepsi Cola, was running the company, <laughs> and it was the worst piece of shit I, I opened it up to see what made it work and they actually as insulation had tin foil that's how cheap that apple was it was a terrible machine it was just Jobs do you remember that bad. one at all Ray which one Alex what did you say the, 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 the really bad Mac when they were making bad was, Macs oh, was that the yeah, Mac that was colorful Mac and no there was a time when they were making terrible machines, and they were even having uh, third parties do everything. They were, uh, oh, oh, the, clones. Well, they were no, they were yeah, letting. Yeah, they were terrible. They were letting. There was thir a time when they were. Yeah. There was there was a time when they let third parties make them, if they wanted yeah. to. But this was, was a like this was an Apple the, this was an Apple Mac, okay. Oh, okay. And it was yeah. just ghastly. I never used the thing. When I did use it, I think it was as a planter. I mean, it was that bad. <laughs> Yeah. Now, there were machines I like the Lisa and the Next. Well, that uh, that was before this. That was before this. Yeah, I, 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 there was a Next at uh, Live 105. They bought a Next because... Those were nice. Well, what yeah. happened was they started... It was the time they started slowly delivering commercials to radio stations over telephone lines where they would send you the file. And mm -hmm. the one company that was doing this required that you had a Next computer. So they had a Next computer there. But the next didn't really do much of anything, you know. It wasn't, it wasn't a big whoop. Um, yeah, and it was also a. There wasn't enough software for the next. There wasn't enough software, and it was too. Ex it was a very expensive yeah. machine. I mean, they ran like ten grand yeah. or something like that. You know, they were very expensive. It looked nice. Huh? Uh, oh yeah, it, it, yeah. Well, I mean, Steve yeah. Chief, Steve Jobs was a great uh, furniture salesman. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and. Yeah. Uh, what was it? Uh, 
but this one they sent me was just, it was horrible. It was just ghastly. And I wasn't a, a Mac guy until, uh, until I started using Final Cut Pro for some editing that I had to do for somebody else. And then I said, this is not bad. You know, it's pretty good. You know, and it was a great graphics machine. So that's what I've been using ever since. That's what I'm using here. You know, and the one that I can't, that I that kept breaking down on me he, over here is the uh, is the PC. You know, so. so that's pretty old. I mean, how many years is that? You got it used, that oh, PC. This, no, but this PC from, works fine. From this, this PC is peppy, but for some reason, OBS Studio is crapping out on me on it, and I don't know yeah. why. It could be something I, with OBS Studio. I find that uh, PCs don't last as long. They bog down. I have a MacBook Pro that's from 2010 that still works great. Well, I, have a Mac, I have a Mac in the other room that's uh, from 2010. And what I'm thinking of doing is replacing the uh, display card in it to something that will run a thing called Metal, and then I'll be able to install Mojave in it. And uh, this thing will be have a real peppy CPU, and I can use it as an alternative machine to this one. And you, those old those old Mac Pros are redoable. I mean, you can put in more memory, and you can put in a new uh, CPU in it, and you can do all kinds of things uh, with them because they're very modular. And um, there are people who've restored them, and they're as almost as good as the ash can is trash can. The new power. the new Mac Pro, which I'm not sure if it's out yet. Uh, and it's and it's uh, a, so expensive, but uh, I think that you can do those same kind of things with it. That, not uh, not to the same the not to the grater. same extent you can do with the old cheese grater. No, no. The uh, cheese grater is one of the most beautiful computers. You know? Well, because it was all very modular, you can put in hard drives. I like the idea of the hard drives rather than the flash memory. But you know what I found out? Found the other day. This is really just a killer. You know, flash memory is, is, is not like, not, it's not a hard drive. It's solid state drive. It's solid state memory. And the trouble is that they're really, uh, they're, 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 they're expensive. All right? Yeah. Get this. Oh, it's, this sold out already. It's a sold out status. Micron 4 terabyte solid state drive. That's pretty huge, isn't it? Internal wow. or external? Uh, internal. Internal. Wow. wow. Yeah. Do you know how much they were selling it for? That's why it sold out. Three hundred and sixty no, bucks. Wow. Wow. Three hundred and sixty dollars. Jeez. And I thought. I wonder if it would fit in a Mac Pro. Well, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, of course it will. It fits in the, the yeah. same slot that a uh, a hard drive would. And you just mm -hmm. mount it on the tray and put it in there, and you're good to go. And uh, you throw one of those in there, and now you got a really peppy machine going for you. No, yeah. I'm talking about the trash can. One. You know. Oh, the trash so can? No, a... no, no. You can't put those in the trash can. I mean, there is one in there, uh, but yeah. I, I don't but think not it, it's, it's not that configuration. No, no. Uh, so, you yeah. know, but uh, this is... Uh, 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 Ray's got his hand uh, up. Yes, hard yes, to yes, see he's in the dark. yes Ray. I was just curious. Do you know um, what they use... To edit, uh, you know, high budget feature films, these Macs, like. Well, yeah, they they, you can use yeah, their PCs to the, do it. You know, I mean, oh, okay. it, it, it's just a question of the power you need to do it. Yeah. You know, and uh, the new Macs that Mac Pro they're coming out with, probably a motion picture company would be the kind of person that would buy it and be able yeah. to afford it, and they could max it out, and have a very powerful machine to cut films with. You know. I can do yeah. movies with this. Uh, you know, I find that the, the trash can is quite peppy. It's got a lot of power to it. And yeah, we'll, I've bought my trash can from a guy that made movies with it, and now he's got like a $14,000 PC. I think I sent you his configuration, Yeah, uh, Alex. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it, it's, it's so powerful. And it's a PC. Yeah, uh, but you can, uh, you, can, uh, you can edit films with it, you know. The problem with the PC is I don't think you can use Final Cut on it, right? The PC, you no, there's no. You can't use Final Adobe Cut. You, you can use you can use Adobe. I I use Adobe Premiere quite often. Yeah, that's what I, I use. I find Adobe Premiere to be a little bit peppier, you know. Okay. Uh, yeah. You know, in just doing it, um, 
but I like Final Cut Pro. I just think it's a really swell program, you know. Yeah. And, and, and the, the Final Cut Pro for everybody is a video editing program that Apple makes. The, when they first they first brought it out, it was terrific, and then they brought out the new one, and it sucked. But slowly they they've kept improving it and improving it and improving it, and now it's, it's, it's pretty much the standard of the industry again. Didn't they get rid of that? Uh, I thought there was some video editing program that many people used. Something, it might have been something 10. But any, I thought that's gone. Or is it the Final Cut Pro? No, Final Cut Pro X is the, is the successor to Final Cut Pro. Wow. Uh, and it, this is more of a digital program. And it's a, it's a very good program, you know. But it was terrible when it first came out. People hated it. Uh, but once they got used to it, and once it got used to the audience that it was playing to, and they improved it, uh, it became a it became the standard of the industry again. Yeah. Yeah. About 20 years ago, I did a, a short film with this guy who started this little film company. His name was Michael Wall, and uh, he was the first. He was the guy who designed the initial Final Cut Pro. Yeah. And he made so much money, mm-hmm. he just. He just quit working and just was doing whatever he felt like. He was like 30 years old, 35. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> uh, uh, but you know, I, I, um, I, I actually uh, probably should try and get some editing jobs or something. Marjorie sent me a thing where some woman needed a video editor, and then I found out what she did for a living, and she's a pit bull advocate. And oh, wanted, wanted you to edit videos of pit bulls. And I went, I don't know. <laughs> you know? A lot of people are uh, feel that pit bulls get a bad rap. Yeah, and, that's what that's uh, her whole take. Yeah, they're, they're, so some yeah. people tell me the pit bulls are, are very loving animals. It's just that yeah. a couple of them every now and then snap, and then your baby doesn't it, have his head the anymore. It's people that train them. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and make them fighting dogs. That yeah. Raise if you those go- if you go on Live Leak <laughs> on the must see like a few days ago, mm-hmm. there's this pit bull looking at a bird on the fence and it looks like he's just sniffing it and kind of playing and people are going, Oh, how cute, how cute and all of a sudden the dog just goes Rum! and just eats the bird and swallows the whole thing. Like wow. this pit bull in a split second like yeah. and then everyone was everyone was screaming and yeah. I don't. If I had a little kid, I would want him around the or her around the pit bull. You know, mm-hmm. I, I think there there are some breeds that are just uh, uh, not trustworthy. There was a, a thing in San Francisco where this woman, uh, uh, her dog, it was some crazy breed, and it attacked uh, uh, this. Uh, she was a soccer coach at St. Mary's College and killed her in the lobby of her apartment was in uh, Pacific Heights. Uh, yeah, that was the, the that was a huge thing out here. Remember yeah, that? Bill? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was one and, of those. Uh, um, the, I don't those... think that breed is allowed to be sold. In this, in this no, country. no, it's it's like a pit bull, but it's two or three times as large. And they actually were, had some kind of sexual relationship with the dog, which is why the dog was protected. Remember that? No, well, I don't oh, remember yeah, the sexual thing. Really but... Oh, yo, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, the people in that apartment. The the were, woman like, was an attorney. To... Her husband yeah. was an attorney, and yeah, the and had, other woman was a, a, a gay uh, yes. a woman who was a soccer coach at St. Yes. Mary's College. And and the whole the whole thing was is that the, the, the two attorneys used to have sex with the dog, and the dog would protect the people, uh, to re- protect them when they felt like they, they were being threatened because the dog was like their this sexual this dog was, it was so, disgusting. Yeah, it was. Uh, do you remember the name of that breed? Yeah, it's uh, oh, it's on the tip of my tongue. I, I'll think of it in a second. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember yeah, that, there's... Alex? Were you here when that yeah, happened? I think no. Alex was no. here. No. Oh, no. maybe you were in Florida or something. No. I don't know. No, anyway. I thought you were here. Yeah. Was, my my, uh, it... my my latest depression is, I'm somewhere along the line. I put on ten pounds. Wow. And so I went on a diet, for nine pounds. And I went on a diet, went back on the diet stringently. And I can't lose. I can't lose it. Huh? 
just a plateau. If you keep it's, keep it up, it'll yeah. eventually. Yeah, I mean, I I just but it's driving me crazy. I got on the scale the other day and I was down two 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 pounds. I went good, get on my way, and all of a sudden the next day I was up one, and today I was up where I was before, and I went. But wait a minute! I've been stringently on this diet. So what's what's happening here? You know, so, do I look fat to you? No, no, That's you're like, in a little yeah. circle. Oh, like look at me! Know. Look at me! I'll stand up! I'll stand up! <laughs> <laughs> do I look fat? No. No. You know, just, I wouldn't go on the scale as much because I think sometimes when you get, you look at the scale, it starts getting into your mind. Yeah, yeah. It's well. like the doctors. How do you feel? Yeah, yeah. Well, I I feel fat. I'm feeling really good. On yeah. this plant-based diet, yeah, uh, oh, God, I know. actually look forward to to juicing, and you know I'm still I'm having one small meal a day, and I just drink juice the rest of the day, and you know I, I really like it. So someone coming in your mouth wouldn't be a problem for you. Huh? <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Where did you come up with that one? <laughs> I don't know. But so I don't look fat to you guys. I don't look fat to you guys, no, right? Okay. I don't see yeah. yeah. If if they tasted like spinach and broccoli, it wouldn't be. A oh, I'm still I still <laughs> at, at the weight I'm at. I've lost over 45 pounds, so you know I'm I'm fine. Wow. Well, anyway, you know uh, I'm gonna take two days off. I don't know why, but it's it's a it's a Labor Day weekend. Get that out of the way. See, we don't have Jerry Lewis anymore. I missed the telethon. I, feel like I missed the telethon, too. I missed it. You know, I told you about the year that he actually sang You'll Never Walk Alone yes. for me. Yeah. Uh, I'm the uh, that and so. and I, because it wasn't really me that he said directly, but he said this is for that disc jockey in New York, and I knew that we had had some kind of communication with him over something I had said about him, uh, in which I said that he wasn't... Uh, I. I that I, I I really couldn't stand him, but uh, as a performer, but as a, a decent person, he's done a really nice job with muscular dystrophy. And so he said, uh, "I'm going to sing the song now, and I hope it's good enough for that disc jockey in New York City." <laughs> and I looked at the people in the room, and I went, "He just dedicated that song to me." <laughs> because we had sent him a letter because you had to send a letter in those days if you if you said something about something it was called equal time or uh, a fair fair reply uh, the fairness doctrine is fair reply and so you would say well Alex said this about you if you would like to reply please contact us you know so he we knew he had gotten that that letter and um, they were sending out those letters all the time because they had been popped by somebody once for not doing it. So they were super sensitive about it. And the fact that I had said this about Jerry Lewis, they felt they had to write him a letter and say, Mr. Lewis, Mr. Bennett said, you know, blah, 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 blah. So, you anyway. know how you could fix the post office? How's that? If CNN had to do that every time they said something about Trump, they, they would have so many letters going oh, yes. out, the post office would be, you know, in the money. But you don't have to do it for the president of the United States because he can't sue. True. He hasn't got the right to say, hey, uh, the fairness doctrine, I've got to have equal time for reply. So uh, let me ask you this. What? If uh, you know how Jerry Lewis had muscular dystrophy and other celebrities had other uh, uh, types of diseases that they would get behind. Mm, yeah. What disease would you get behind if you had oh, yeah, if you could pick one? I think syphilis. <laughs> I think I think without a question syphilis, you know, either that or gonorrhea. Gonorrhea would be better because oh. then, then I could go on the air. We call it the clapathon. You know, <laughs> you just reminded me of something. Joe Walsh is breaking up the Eagles and running for president against uh, Trump. I know. Yeah. It's no, another it's Joe <laughs> Walsh. <laughs> But you know, you, you can always hope. Yeah, I would yeah. have a diarrhea thon. A diarrhea thon, very good. Yeah, that's, that's and in the middle, you run into a modium. That, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that was a crappy idea. Very good. And then any time, that was a crappy idea. Anyway, any time you, you know you could run off. Excuse me, I gotta go. Want to thank you everybody for being here tonight. Uh, we'll probably see right. you again next week. Uh, Jeff, thank you so much for being here. Ray, thank you, even though you're in the dark. Uh, uh, it got dark while you were doing this, thing, but we yeah, had a very nice sunset that we had pictures of. Uh, Phil, thank you. You've been very good, Phil. 
Very good. Thank you. You. I know how to do it. You know how to do it. You know exactly how to do it. Patrick, thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, and, and Charlie, always good to have you here. And, of course, Tony, that hideous wallpaper has got to go. Anyway, everybody... Uh, would you uh, would you please? Um, I pushed down the wrong, turned down the music. Everybody, wave a, a goodbye, and I will wave back. Okay, all righty, bye bye, everybody. Okay, there they go. That's our citizen panel for tonight. I I don't know how I got hung up on that. That 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 that's being hung up on your own program <laughs> is is an insult, but maybe it was well deserved. Anyway, we're off tomorrow night. We're off on Friday. We're off on Monday, but we'll be back on Tuesday with the intersection. With the intersection. With uh, the ramble. The intersection is next with uh, Jack Bishop, and uh, you stick around. Call him. He really, really has a good show. And uh, then Damien will be back here on Tuesday at uh, at 9:30. And I got to tell you, Damien's show is very interesting. If you get a chance to listen to it, I know maybe you can't listen to it uh, live. But listen to it on the on the on the internet because it's really a terrific show. I really enjoy it every night when I hear it. Anyway, that's it. I'll see you at ten o'clock uh, Tuesday. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye bye everybody. <laughs>